keep our housing prices in line with economic fundamentals. We keep hearing this from our ministers whenever cooling measures are introduced. So why is EC least impacted by the recent cooling measures? Let us take a look. In order to better understand our government's role, let us rewind and take a look at the history of our housing policies. Since independence, Singapore has developed a unique housing system with three quarters of our housing stock being built by HDBs and home ownership finance through CPF. As a result, our home ownership rate of more than 90% is one of the highest among market economies. At different stages of our economic development, our government was faced with different set of housing problems. An integrated land housing supply and financing framework was established in the 1960s to solve the severe housing shortage. By the 1990s, the challenge was that of renewing aging estates and creating a market for HDB transactions. Housing subsidies in the form of housing grants were also introduced. And more recently, challenges include curbing speculative demand as well as coping with increasing income inequalities and an aging population. Executive condominium is a hybrid of public and private housing that was introduced in 1996 to cater for middle-income Singaporeans. They are sold and developed by private developers and have attributes of private condominiums and yet are priced substantially lower than their private counterparts. EC owners are bounded by a set of stringent regulations in order to ensure financial prudence and to keep speculative demand away. The complex eligibility schemes and minimum occupation period help to make certain that own state is the owner's priority when it comes to purchasing an EC. On top of TDSR, EC owners need to adhere to the more stringent mortgage servicing ratio which is kept at only 30% of a borrower's gross monthly income that can be used towards repaying all property loans. The recent measures to cool the market can be viewed as macroprudential policies. which are used to stabilize housing price, mitigate the risk of a self-reinforcing cycle of price increase, and preempt a housing bubble from developing. All along, the main objective of an EC was to provide genuine home ownership for our aspirational citizens and not a platform for investors to profit from. Additionally, the strict financial assessment in place helps to ensure that EC owners do not over-leverage when purchasing their dream home. And these are the two main reasons why the recent cooling measures are not targeted at EC owners. Having said so, it's important to note that it is not the intention of our government to reduce housing prices with their cooling measures. In fact, it is our government's aim to ensure that housing remains an attractive yet stable investment. One reason being that the wealth of our citizens is mainly locked into housing and a sudden fall of housing prices would have substantial negative wealth effects. With minimal impact to EC housing demand and potential increased interest from private and resale HDB buyers who are affected by the cooling measures, 2022 is definitely going to be a vibrant year for EC. Find out more in our next episode. See you!